This is the pre-lab video for the sucrose hydrolysis lab in CHEM 253. The protocol is available on Moodle for download. So this is a lab that combines carbohydrate chemistry and kinetics, and we're going to use a polarimeter. So we're going to be looking at optical rotation of a chiral compound and looking at this change to measure the hydrolysis of sucrose or table sugar. And we'll have a couple different ways of doing this. One is acid catalyzed hydrolysis. The other one is an enzymatic uh, one, either from your spit or from yeast. And we're going to basically just measure the optical rotation in 10 minute intervals for about two hours. And then you'll be able to get uh, rate data that allow you to determine a rate law, a rate constant using the integrated rate law. So the new skills, we haven't really done anything with kinetics much in chemistry, in organic chemistry. I mean, we do a lot in gen chem and I mean, we do kinetics here too. It uh, helps give us a lot of information about mechanisms and things like that. So this will be a kinetics lab and also carbohydrate chemistry. We're doing that in lecture right now. And we're gonna reinforce things we've already done uh, using the polarimeter uh, and of course working safely in lab, making sure we don't uh, get sucrose poisoning or something. Um, and of course, disposing of waste and all that stuff. Okay, so everybody's heard of sucrose. It's the main component of table sugar, and it's a disaccharide. So it's two carbohydrate monomers, monosaccharides. In this case, it's glucose and fructose. So glucose, we typically draw in the piranicide form, and fructose, we tend to draw in the furanicide form. And it's what we call a non-reducing sugar. So the interesting thing about the linkage of sucrose is that it's two anomeric positions that are coupled together. It's not um, the typical thing where an anomeric position of one uh, carbohydrate is attached to just a, a regular old hydroxyl on the other. This actually has two, and so it means it's a non-reducing sugar. It also means it's a little bit more stable, uh, so sucrose is much more stable than most uh, of the carbohydrates around. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's, so it's a non-reducing sugar. Okay, and so um, hydrolysis obviously is a main place where we get a good amount of our carbohydrates um, between that and starch. And so hydrolysis in this case, of course, will yield glucose and fructose. And sucrose is actually pretty stable uh, at neutral pH. Um, but you can hydrolyze it in uh, acid, which is, so that happens in the stomach. And it's still a relatively slow thing. Not all of sucrose is digested in the stomach. And then typically it waits till it gets to the, the, the small intestine where the small intestine uh, secretes uh, enzymes called sucrases, so basically the hydrolyzed sucrose. And one of those is known as invertase. Uh, invertase is often more common in plants and bacteria, but that will cleave it as well. So that'll be doing a catalytic. So <laughs> if we look at the mechanism, it's the standard mechanism for carbohydrate hydrolysis. And the rate limiting step has got to be either protonation, additional water, or cleavage, okay? So um, in all these cases, you've either got a unimolecular reaction or you've got a bimolecular reaction where one of the species in, is in high uh, concentration is essentially constant. So either the acid, if you're running in strong enough acid, or uh, water, obviously. So, so the mechanism, the kinetics are going to be either first order or pseudo first order. And that would be the same with the enzymatic mechanism as well. So if it's first order, in theory, we can use the integrated rate law and plot the natural log of sucrose concentration uh, on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. In that case, then the slope would be a minus the rate constant. Now, so we're going to do that. We have to figure out what the concentration of sucrose is. So this is where we're going to use polarimetry. Okay, so sucrose is a chiral compound. It's enantiomerically pure and has an activity about 66 plus 66. Now, we may not get that high because we're going to use a different concentration, but, um, but it's, it's got a positive rotation. And if you hydrolyze it, you're going to get actually two things that are chirally active. One is going to have a plus rotation. The other one's going to have a minus rotation. But you have different animals and stuff. And the lab protocol kind of goes through it all. Um, the bottom line is overall the change should be negative. Okay, so it's it's hard to predict exactly what it's going to be, uh, but you should get uh, a negative number. So you'll see it go from positive to negative. If it, once it's totally hydrolyzed, you should have a, a negative number. So so we're going to do this over time. Okay, so the general plan then is to make a sucrose solution, just follow the protocol and measure the rotation of it before you add anything. And then we'll either add HCl or you'll spit in it. Um, now your saliva does not have invertase or any sort of sucrase in it. Uh, it won't digest, but you have bacteria if you haven't brushed your teeth. Uh, so get somebody who hasn't brushed their teeth and they'll probably cleave it a little bit better. Now you may not want to hang out with them, but uh, at least you got that. But we also have some yeast extract, so I'll take, and that's something we haven't tried before, so I'm going to try that and see what happens. Now we'll have the water baths going around 30 degrees, so you can incubate them in there. Uh, and the idea is we'll take samples every 10 minutes or so. 
Now it's going to be a little complicated because we're going to have a lot of people and only one polarimeter, but you, we should be able to sort of coordinate things. So we'll get about 10 readings, so about 100 minutes, and then we'll keep it in the drawer for a week. And then next week we'll take a reading one last time and that'll tell us what completely hydrolyzed is. Because it's probably, you know, the spit one especially is probably going to be pretty slow. Uh, my guess is that they won't be done for a few hours and I don't want to sit there for the whole time. So we'll just let it go to a week. And then a week later we'll be able to take, and that'll be sort of the final number. So we'll have an initial number, which will be the one you, you take before you add anything. We'll have the final number, which will be after the week. And then you'll have all the ones in between. Okay, and so what that'll allow you to do then is to get a relative sucrose concentration. Okay, so you'll be able to figure out how much sucrose you have by just uh, taking those rotations. So, um, so the equations right here, I'll have it in the, I'll have it in the lab right up too. But if you just take a reading at any given time, so alpha t, and then you subtract the final out of it, then you divide that by the total distance between and rotation from the original sample to that. That should give you a percentage, and so that percentage should be the amount that's left. So if AT equals A0, then you have 100%. And if AT equals AF, then you have 0%. So everything else should be in between. So then you can plot the natural log of the sucrose concentration versus time and uh, hopefully get a straight line and get the rate constant.